This is the World Peace Bell. 12 feet high and 66,000 pounds, it's the largest swinging bell in the world. Located in Newport, Kentucky, it was built to commemorate the turn of the millennium. Like most bells, it's made of a copper alloy, often referred to as bell bronze. The world's peace bell is made of 80% copper and 20% tin. The reason bells are made of 80% copper and 20% tin is the, uh, the quality of sound. Up until around 1600, they experimented a lot with different uh, copper, zinc, tin, and it was determined that the combination of 80% copper and 20% tin produced the best uh, sound. The bell was made the same way bells have been made since the Middle Ages. Molten bronze was poured into a mold. But pouring metal for a bell this large presented a daunting new challenge. We had about 80,000 pounds of metal ready to be poured. We calculated that it had to be done in four minutes and 54 seconds. If it was too slow, we'd end up like the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. If it didn't cool uniformly, the danger would be that the bell would crack the first time it would hit because the metal would be inconsistent. The final cooling stage would be inconsistent. The bell's designers from Burden Bells in Cincinnati, Ohio, held their breath the first time the switch was thrown to release the striking hammer. Of course, we were all worried about what would happen. We hoped we didn't have another Liberty Bell on our hands. 18 seconds before midnight, the switch was turned on and it struck right on it. With the first strike, we knew it was good. Burden Bells has been making bells since 1842. Today, it operates the oldest bell foundry in the United States. It makes about 250 large bells each year, used mostly by churches and universities. It casts bells using a method it developed which uses sand instead of clay to make each mold. Sand is more efficient as it dries and hardens much faster. The sand is formed into a bell shape using an aluminum pattern. What we're doing is we're packing the sand nice and tight uh, so that it'll uh, create that perfect uh, cavity that the bell is sitting in. This sand will get really hard like concrete. Then we'll roll this thing back over and you'll see the inside profile of the bell. That's when we'll uh, put that piece of the flask on and we'll put more sand in, do the exact same thing. And then when we break the flask apart, we'll pull the pattern out. That way we can restack the two pieces of flask together and create a hollow cavity uh, that's the exact replica of the inside of the bell and the exact replica of the outside of the bell. We then melt bronze, bring it up to 2200 degrees, pour it in the sand mold, wait for it to cool, break it out, and then the arduous task of cleaning it up starts. As it comes out of the uh, cores, when we break it loose, it's not very good looking. Verdon also uses bronze to make statues. For centuries, artists have valued bronze for its beauty and durability. Some statues are cast using a process similar to the one used to make bells, 